All right, now Kyle and Amanda, if you are both there, I'm not sure if you're able to see uh, people in the lobby, but if you see them as we go, feel free to admit people if it's giving you that functionality. All right, we'll get started. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sarah Buxton. I'm the Director of Workforce Development for the Vermont Department of Labor. And um, I am also covering for a couple of other vacant positions we have at the Department of Labor. One is a grants management specialist um, specific to this position. So I'm playing double duty in uh, my role here today. Um, also because of those uh, vacancies, which many of you are probably also feeling, um, we've decided that this year we didn't really have the capacity to just answer questions and provide technical assistance about the 2022 internship grant opportunity, um, you know, one on one. So we've asked you to send in questions. We've we're recording this webinar. I'm going to answer. I I had four questions submitted. They're pretty simple, straightforward ones. I'll go through those first, but then I'll also try to unmute you. And um, please again, feel free to you know raise your hand. I think we'll have plenty of time if you want to ask additional questions now. Um, what we'll do is we'll make sure that this is. Um, Recorded, as you can see now, um, and being transcribed, Kyle Tweet, our communications coordinator, um, and Amanda Wheeler, our policy um, liaison, will also help me in creating a little Q&A and posting this onto our website by Monday morning. So I believe in the chat, Kyle has just put the link to the application. I'm sure you're all here because you have actually seen the application and understood that we were having this webinar. But in case you need it, it's right there. Um, and let me just admit this last person. There we go. OK. And so with that, why don't I just jump in um, and answer some of the questions? So this is the this is um, some information around the 2022 Vermont internship grant program or program grants. Um, the Department of Labor is going to be awarding um, $400,000 to eligible applicants who submit proposals by um, the 9th of June. So that's next Thursday. You're going to submit them to the email box that is um, labor.grants at vermont.gov. Please take note that um, for um, the ease of our administering the grants on the other side and creating the grant documents during for a quick turnaround, we really would appreciate um, your application to be sent so that um, the application, which is attachment A, is in a Word document because then I can more easily put it into a grant document um, and submit that as Word and then um, the last two pieces you can submit as uh, PDFs. They require some signatures. So the four questions that I have received, um, I won't necessarily say the organization's name because they may have broad applicability, um, but I'll just read the questions. I'll give you the answers and then um, I'll address any questions. So the first is, um, uh, could an internship be in support of the hospitality industry, specifically for a community organization with a marketing program to boost local tourism? And the answer is yes. Um, so um, targeted sectors are um, loosely defined. I assume if you pick a sector, you're going to describe to me in the um, uh, in your application what about it is an in-demand sector for your region or for the state. Um, it's pretty evident, I think, even looking at some um, very quick labor market information that the hospitality industry is um, is in uh, high need. So yes, hospitality industry, totally fine. Internships are great. Um, community organization, yes. Um, the uh, community organization would either be, as an applicant, they could be um, the coordinator of the internships and also pay um, stipends or wages if that's part of the application um, or the the, um, the, inter the individuals could be 
um, interns at that community organization and assist with uh, marketing and promotion as they learn about the job. OK, the next one is um, the center asks if they understood correctly that grant funds can compensate the grantees employees who are involved in creating and oversight um, overseeing and administering internship programs in house and um, that the grantee is responsible for paying a stipend to the intern. So part one is yes. Grant funds absolutely can support your organization in standing up and supporting the internship program. We do know, um, as many of you with internships um, are also experienced in understanding that internships aren't always really easy and you need time and you need to um, have staff resources, help with supervision, um, and then even setting up and administering uh, payroll, et cetera. And yes, the grantee, um, so the, the grantee can ask for money to provide those stipends or wages to the um, to the individuals or um, if that's the part that the employer is kicking in. Um, I think you will recall in the notice that that um, those that demonstrate that there's some um, contribution from employers or the organization uh, will receive more favorable attention. Um, but you, that doesn't mean you can't pay for wages and stipends as the grantee. But if you uh, chose not to, that's okay too. We really are looking for paid internships, however, um, in these grants, one way or the other. Um, the next asks, the application says there's a four week minimum requirement. Um, is it a minimum for the number of hours per week or total number of hours? Um, so really what the minimum is, is that we we don't want internships that are just like a two week experience because we view those more as job shadows and not a preparatory experience that might uh, that might ultimately um, result in a job offer. So there's no minimum on a number of hours. Um, an internship might be three days a week. It might be five days a week. Um, but it, it should be structured to last at least, you know, more than four weeks. And it should be something, as you read in a couple of places in the announcement, um, that there's a likelihood that a, a job would be offered. So again, just trying to distinguish between job shadowing and an internship. Um, the last question is um, the um, inquirer is currently hosting um, a career and technical center student and a co-op um, relationship during this, his last year of high school. Um, he's going to be graduating this month and they want to know if they can apply for the Vermont internship program um, if he's graduated from high school but does not plan to continue on to college after high school. The answer is yes, um, you, sh you certainly can, um, but I would the caution I would throw here is um, internships shouldn't be used in lieu of an offer of employment. So um, of course we want the individual to be paid, but the long-term goal for all of our folks that we are supporting is for them to have unsubsidized permanent employment. And so if it's really that we just, you, you're ready to hire the, the person, great. If you feel that an internship is another way for you to um, better assess um, work ethic and um, skills and help develop those skills with the possibility of offering a job after that uh, temporary period of time, um, then that's a that's a great use of it. OK, those were the four questions I had. Um, I see some of the askers of the questions are also on this call. Um, while I try to see if I can um, turn off or turn back on all of your microphones. Um, feel free to put questions into the chat and and or raise your hand. Sarah, are you seeing the chat questions or no? Um, I am not. I'm looking um, just to see if I can unmute people. I don't know if you or Amanda are able to also do that. Yeah. Um, okay. 
you if you yeah. can't for some reason I can read some of the questions uh, okay. I can, on my end. So uh, all right. Question uh, from uh, like Jeffrey Thomas Lever. Uh, must grant recipients be physically located in Vermont? So I guess like do they have to be uh, just their duty station or something actually have to be, you know, within state borders or just for a Vermont based organization or something to that effect, I would presume is what the individual is asking. Um, no, so I'm assuming maybe you're just over the border. Um, so we're looking to support the employment, though, of Vermonters. So in your application, we're going to support employment with Vermont employers um, that, you know, that they will have priority. Um, but that does not mean that you can't apply because um, there is a lot of cross border labor force swap that goes on, um, particularly in the upper valley and down in the Bennington area. So um, I could foresee, especially if you were partnering with like a local career and technical education center um, and trying to support those students and having um, an experience and have gainful employment. Similarly, maybe a post secondary school that you're working with um, that is helping to support your um, your industry. So it it is it is OK. Um, OK. Yeah. Great. Uh, next question is from Angela. Uh, do funds need to be used for Oh, I think it's the kind of the same question be used for Vermont students, residents, or can they be for out of state residents who are studying here? So it's a little bit different, but you know, just used yeah. for Vermont. So I guess it's like Vermont high school students or Vermont residents that may be yeah. being out of state, or can it be, you know, a student say at Castleton or NVU that, you know, is studying yeah. within Vermont? Sure. So, it, so I'm thinking that your question is like, a uh, student attending Castleton who um, perhaps is from Amherst, Massachusetts? And the answer is yes, because what we're hoping and we find to be a very valuable um, pipeline, uh, um, a valuable way to develop a pipeline is to offer those students um, an internship, a paid internship that then off then results in a job. So um, yes, if the question is must students be residents of Vermont, um, they don't have to be. Especially if we can get them to move here with employment. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Alicia is asking if funded, what is the time frame that we must utilize the funds requested? For example, we're requesting for two interns, but this, but may, or sorry, but may only end up with one this fall. So may we use the remaining funds for the following years, intern 23, 24. So I guess just the time frame to utilize right. funds in terms of recruitment. Right. Yeah, I I regret to have to provide this answer, and that's that they're one year grants because that's the way that the state grant uh, the state funding system works. So we are granted the money to then sub award out. Um, the period of performance is one year. So if you had someone this fall, you could also do someone in the spring. The money um, would need to be all obligated by June 30 of next year. In some circumstances, um, and they they should not be planned circumstances, but rather more unexpected um, circumstances. We go, we can go through a grant modification process, um, and I can extend a grant. Um, I can work with our fiscal and legal office to approve a modification that extends the period of performance for, you know, three, four, five, six months. Um, we still need to. Um, um, go through an approval process, but in circumstances where maybe um, this this recently happened, um, one employer had an intern who didn't work out and it was just one intern and, and wanted to be able to offer this internship over this coming summer. And so I'm set to approve um, to approve that. But the plan, the proposal was to have had the internship completed by the end of this year. So a circumstance like that on a case by case basis, we can do some extensions, but it unfortunately is a one year grant. So. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from Abby, uh, just double checking since this is a reimbursement grant, the grant funds would go directly to the employer, not to the intern. Uh, just I guess that would be, you know, we'll be we, we would be providing, 
you know, the grant funding directly to, you know, the, the organization, the employer of the intern and not, you know, to Joe Smith intern. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so it is a reimbursement grant so that you, the grantee, are the one we fund. So you will send us quarterly requests for payment or whenever, um, actually you'll send us quarterly fiscal reports, but you may ask for money at any time and send in the right uh, form to our fiscal office and then they, they um, cut a check to you and uh, provide that reimbursement. Um, so it does not go to the participant through like our payroll system or something like that. It goes directly to you and then you use the money as we've agreed that you will use it in your grant. Um, it is a reimbursable grant. However, um, we also have a mechanism for you to request cash in advance. And it's something that our fiscal office, you know, we prefer to do reimbursable grants because then when it comes to the end of the period of performance, um, you can just simply execute a grant closeout and account for money not spent um, with a, a um, when we provide the money in advance, um, then there's a lot more reconciling with paperwork that has to be done to make sure that you don't owe us a check back because you didn't spend all of the grant. Um, but it is a mechanism that we have. It's just more cumbersome. Um, and sometimes is important for organizations who don't have cash flow to be able to to um, start paying wages um, and you don't have to ask for all of the money. Perhaps it's just the the wages that you may need for the first few weeks. And then uh, next question is from Katrina asking um, you may know DUNS number is a DUNS number required to apply. Um, um, yes, a DUNS number is required. Uh, from Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Is it is it possible to include just other quote unquote other for intern salaries only and not any reimbursement for staff time under the personnel piece of the grant? Yes. Yep, absolutely. Um, so if you simply are just looking for that money to pay interns and you um, maybe already have an existing internship program and want to expand it um, and this will give you the ability to hire a few more um, and carry the cost of that overhead, that's that's fine. And um, yep, so absolutely, you can do just salaries. And that's a good, a good point in time, just to remind everyone, I think it's spelled out pretty clearly in the grant, but the personnel and the fringe lines are just for the grantees personnel and fringe like it, you your organization um all of the participant costs around salary should go in other uh next question is from devon um uh, sounds like it's a comp maybe a conflict of interest in terms of like hiring um family members so just reading the question we've often had family members of current employees as interns in the past regarding the conflict of interest clause would there be a violation if we hired a family member as an intern and paid their stipend with the grant money? Is the answer to this question any different if the current employee is a decision maker or a signer on the application? So that just think about very very and, question. Yeah. So yeah. you should you should follow the hiring practices that you um, are required to follow as though you were hiring that person um, as your own employee, but I'm quickly moving to the conflict of interest clause. You're going to ask me to use lawyer skills on the fly, which is never a good idea, but I'm going to take a quick look because I haven't read that in quite a while. Um, OK, so um, the conflict of interest clause on page 16 of the grant, it says um, these are state requirements. Party shall fully disclose in writing any conflicts of interest or potential conflicts of interest. Um, I think your best bet there is to make sure you've done two things. If there is some policy or um, prohibition around hiring that person, not as an intern, but as a regular employee that would prevent you, then 
you can't do it. Um, but if that isn't a problem and you could hire that person, that family member as also an employee of the organization, um, then you should be fine. Um, and then it would be best to ensure that in your application, um, if you already have someone in mind that you disclose that. And if you haven't made that selection, what signing this grant agreement will do, it will bind you to, to cause you, if you do make that hire, to disclose that to us, the state, when that happens in the course of your grant. I hope that was clear. If you feel like you need more, I can also pull in our legal counsel just to make sure you feel clear, but I, I feel pretty comfortable that you'll be able to do that. Disclose, disclose, disclose. Okay. Kevin says that sounds clear to me, thank you. Uh, question from Lisa, is there a range for amount per intern placement that we should budget for? Um, I don't know if you need any clarification on that from Lisa, Sarah, but um, I guess the range or amount for intern placement that we should budget for. I don't know if that's like per intern in terms of what you're paying your intern or um, at least I don't know if you want to. We can skip that and go to the next one. If we yeah, and Lisa, clear. if you feel comfortable, I can also see if I can find you and the participants and unmute you. Yep, it's uh, Lisa Nye, and I'm going to get the name wrong, but I'm going to guess Shabbat, C-H-A-B-A-T. Lisa, I'll give you a try here. Um, allow Mike. So if you feel comfortable unmute, unmuting yourself, go go right ahead. Um, or you can follow up a little bit. I think I'm having a hard time understanding yeah. what you mean by the range of placement. Hi, this, this is Lisa. Hey. Uh, so we're looking, you know, I'm, at, I'm here at Landmark College and we're looking at, um, you know, placing students with uh, local employers. So I'm just trying to figure out if there's an amount that you look at, you know, like, so, you know, to place in a, 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 um, an intern, you know, is it like two to eight thousand dollars? Is it, you know, one thousand? You know, you know what I mean? Like this, you know, we I know there's a lot of pieces that roll up into that, but just if we want to get our budget in a range that, you know, would yep. be acceptable. Yep, there's no, there isn't um, a right answer. In the past, we funded grants where um, employers have um, structured their experience so that a participant um, has maybe six weeks of um, like part-time internship experience and then they, they have like a thousand dollar stipend. Others um, have also been funded for, I'm going to use my quick calculator here, but I recall um, up to, tw I think it was, um, they paid at a rate that was um, equal with the lowest paid employee. So I think it was $16 an hour times 40 hours a week times um, 12 weeks. And that was, um, that right now looks like it was um, $7,680. Um, so that would limit the number of interns that you would have that would be grant funded naturally with a, a ceiling. Uh, but there isn't there isn't a right answer there. Um, we'll assume that you'll pull in other um, resources if you need to, to expand your program. Meaning um, as you're placing interns, maybe you're working out an agreement with the employer where you're paying half their wage so that you can place more interns. Um, and that would be A-OK -okay also. Right, that, that's, that's exactly what we're pay more of the salary or when do we bring it to kind of share the cost? Yeah. Thanks. It's very helpful. Yep. And we like, I like seeing that too, that employers um, are sharing in the cost because it tends to suggest that they're more invested in making sure it's a quality experience that will end with a possible offer of employment. Awesome. Uh, Jeffrey's asking, it sounds like, based on um, where the actual organization is located geographically. So it says that we are a 501c3 based in North Adams, Massachusetts. Uh, we have a federal EIN. We don't have a Vermont state EIN. Is that a problem? 
Um, it's not a problem per se, but I would ask you just to make sure that um, the terms of the, the state required assurances and grant provisions um, do require that you are in compliance with um, Vermont law regarding workers comp and insurance. Um, so just, um, you know, you're, you, you may not, it may not be an issue for you, but I can't say specifically whether any of your work would cause you to need to access the Vermont, you know, UI system. Um, cause we, we do do a quick background check on everyone. We can't disperse dollars without making sure that you're in compliance with the Vermont Department of Taxes. You're, you're in good standing, I should say, with the Vermont Department of Taxes, um, workers comp, if you're required to fill out a form or, um, or to um, hold insurance, um, and UI. And if they come back and say, you have an outstanding balance, then we, we can't execute a grant. And I use your, we use your federal EIN to do those checks. Um, and all organizations have to go through those checks before they get state dollars. So I don't think it's a problem per se, but you would just need to know that as you read through the assurances and grant provisions, if you would be required to do any of those things under Vermont law, even though you're across the border, then you would have to be able to attest to being in compliance. Perfect. Okay. Um, looks like he, that was what he was looking for. Um, Amy, so I think it's a question that we, it's about the grant period. Um, if it has to be spent by 6-30-23, I uh, got here late, but the grant period, ex but can the grant period extend past 6 23 or must the grant be spent down? I think we kind of addressed that. But. We did, and, and just quickly, Amy, um, unfortunately, because of the way the state dollars and the budgeting works, um, we can only obligate it for up to a year, so you have to spend it until, uh, you know, spend it down or obligate it. Um, um, I think there's a little bit of time that you can liquidate, but you should plan to, to spend it by 6-30-23. Um, and I, but I did also mention a little bit earlier that if there are extenuating circumstances that are unplanned in the grant, something happens, um, um, we can work through a modification process for a couple of months to go beyond that, but you should plan your proposal to have all the work completed by 6 um, 30 23. Awesome. Which is what they were looking for. Um, I think that's the last question that I have in the chat right now. So I don't know, Sarah, if we want to give a couple minutes, if you have any just kind of final thoughts on the you know grant application process and sure. just kind of some final kind of tag things. We'll answer any other questions that pop up, but yeah. Um, I'll just talk about a few things that we're excited and hopeful to see in these grants. And if you want to emphasize if that's part of what you're thinking through with your program, um, great. Um, emphasize that in your application. Um, last year we were challenged a little bit with some geographic diversity. Um, so if you're a statewide entity and um, it's probably easier to do an internship in Chittenden County um, because of the, the number of college students, et cetera, please still try to consider um, getting out of Chittenden County um, and going to other corners of the state, particularly if there are college students or um, CTE students there who, um, you know, may be there for a summer or for a fall um, program. So geographic diversity is valued. Um, the high demand industries are, are valued right now. Um, healthcare, um, especially if there's a, an offer of employment, health care, um, construction, um, uh, hospitality, uh, child care. Um, we had some really great um, initiatives start a few years ago with a partnership between um, the local career technical education program and a parent child center um, so that the individuals um, went from some learning in the classroom to some experience with child care provide child care um, um, on the job learning and training and then we eventually made that into a pre-apprenticeship program that moved to the registered apprenticeship program so if you're going to maybe start to 
explore and use your grant to kind of pilot whether this combination of work based learning and training can lead to something more. We've we, we in the Department of Labor have just hired a fantastic new director of apprenticeship who's rebooting the whole program. And so sometimes these internship grants um, can really be an interesting starting point for some conversations with employers about taking it to the next level and and starting to create and diversify the entry points into these occupations. So um, that can be everything from a vet tech to uh, jewelry making, <laughs> a couple of the things we've been talking about lately for apprenticeships. So uh, does this grant support emerging programs to start an intern program? I don't know what emerging programs means, but yes. Um, so if you mean by emerging, like in the college sense, like you're starting a new program of study and it's not grounded, um, um, but it's unique um, and you want to start to support employers. I'm thinking, I don't know, funeral directors. Um, that's everything, almost everything is in demand in the in the state, and but we don't always have a diversity of pipelines um, to be able to explore what those occupations look like. So if what you meant by emerging programs is something like they're novel or new, yes. If you meant, um, when I first scanned your question, um, if if any of you can focus on diversifying um, the workforce and promising practices with employers and supporting a diverse workforce, that's awesome. Um, and diversity can be race, gender, gender identity, um, ability, disability, backgrounds, um, English, um, English language, um, uh, proficiency, lower skill level, mature workers. Um, I'm sorry, actually, no, mature workers wouldn't count in this one That's that we're really focused on post-secondary. Actually, no, mature workers could. If you do have some programs, I'm thinking about CCV, um, where folks might be reskilling and looking to use an internship. That could be an opportunity. All right, I'm seeing no more questions. No hands. I will, uh, if, if folks feel free, if you've heard everything you wanted to hear, you're welcome to um, go about your day. I'll stick around here for a little bit longer in case something happens. Um, thank you all for joining. And um, if you think of a question, go ahead and put it in the chat. Once this closes though, Amanda will help pull together an FAQ that summarizes some of the questions that were asked and the answers that were provided. Um, and those will go on the, the labor website. Yep, Kyle just put it up there and we'll go from there. Thank you everyone. Lisa just asked how many, sorry, I'm here I am back again. Lisa just said, how many uh, pages should the narrative be? Um, don't use length, you won't get extra points for length. <laughs> so um, I think if you can keep it to a page or two, um, that would be fine. And if it's under a page even, but you hit the highlights of what you're trying to do, um, that's fine also because some programs will just say, this is purely stipend for this employer or this group of employers. These are the characteristics of the interns. It's how many you, you may just be able to summarize it pretty quickly. Um, so short is good, um, short but complete. And Dina, um, the recording will be located at um, I think Kyle put it in the chat just up above um, but if you go to labor.vermont.gov um, you can find in workforce development you'll see the the Vermont internship program and he'll put it on that site
All right, Kyle and Amanda, I think I'll call this a wrap. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for your help. Bye.